Well, Brother Pelly, as you well know, we talked about this before, you know, uh, there's a lot of, uh, they call it xenophobia going on. Mm -hmm. but, I don't get, but you know, of course, you know, well, we talked about this, uh, as I say, off camera. Maybe we talked, no, anyway. I don't really believe in xenophobia. I know what it is and rest of stuff. And, and I don't even think this is, as I said before, Afrophobia, fear of another African. This to me is actually tribal phobia. Because if you see what happened in different areas, in other words, when it happens in the in the in the eastern part of South Africa, you know, and there's where's the predominant predominance of uh, say Zulu culture, then those people in an area will, you know, say Zulus will be fighting against some eyes, whoever's there. But if it's in the Western Cape, when there's a predominance of say Tosa culture, then those, those of us be fighting against whoever it is. So obviously it's really, well, I'm calling it trapophobia, but in essence it's not even that. It has something to do with something else. And I think it's this. When you are a, a foreigner, you know, somebody who doesn't come from that culture, you come to the area, you see things differently. But I mean that if if you're coming there and there's other people of your of your culture coming too, usually those people that's traveling you know, they, they have a little bit more, you know, their brains are wired differently because they're traveling out of their culture. They're, they're different. And usually if they're merchants, merchants or whatever, and they know about merchant, mer you know, being a, a, a merchant or, you know, a, a, some sort of shopkeeper, well, they're carrying their skills with them. So when they get to this new area, the first inclination is to, well, be a shopkeeper because that's what they did back then. And if they didn't do that, since you have such a small community, those people are thinking together, how can we, you know, sustain ourselves, you know? So they have a different purpose than the people who are just there hanging out. Oh, we had jobs, but now the jobs are gone. You know, they, <laughs> they're not really thinking, you know? The other people, they have to make their jobs, you see? So that's one dynamic. But here was, I was here's what I was really thinking. I'm trying to, because this is an African American, I'm trying to hook this up to say you know, the circumstance of black people in America. You see, because it's not that we had the same situation, but you know, when we when slavery was over there, we started making our little communities. It was very prosperous, but then since we were uh, really a minority, they came and destroyed those kind of things that we made, and they keep on destroying it. This, with all this lynching and this, this police shootings and all, because they keep on trying to destroy black people because they know <laughs> black people, you know, they they go on, but. I don't blame those people for doing what they do. I don't even blame the, 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 the people of the culture of, say, South Africa for doing what they do and lashing out against foreigners. I don't blame the foreigners who are coming in and doing what they're supposed to do. I think we need to take some time, and everybody needs to stop for a second, figure out when they can actually sit down and think and not just talk and, you know, and fight or whatever have you. And they can figure out, well, this is about economics. Because, you know, this whole thing is about economics. So obviously the economic system that you're under is fostering all this bickering and fighting. And if somebody gets up, another group tries to pull them down. That's all economics and power. Then I'm thinking, like, well, how are you going to explain this to people? People don't want to hear all that stuff. To show you what I mean, now let me go to the United States. You know, when they, every time we have a holiday, the first thing people go to is shop. You know, if it's an event, we go and shop. Now, Black America has certain things built in that they can avoid that if they wanted to. For instance, we have a thing called, that we invented in the 60s, called Kwanzaa. Happens between Christmas and New Year's, 12 days. You're not supposed to shop, you're supposed to just give gifts and, 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 and make family kind of things. Well, that's the opportunity to sit down and start thinking and talking about stuff. Just like you have an opportunity, you know, when you have your gatherings, your funerals and your weddings when you have to slaughter the cow and you know then you have your circle of men talking and yes, the women are doing something else I guess the young people are doing something else but in those sessions you all should be talking about hey what's the next opportunity you know I'm not I'm not sure that's what you don't talk about you know what I mean but those circles should be talking about how to advance whatever you're doing instead of just eating and drinking you see but we have the same problem in the United States again we have these holidays and we just eat and drink we don't sit down and brainstorm around how we're going to, we don't really do that. Even when we have, okay, here's a big joke, I'm going to end it here. You know, we had a thing called Negro History Week, you know, Carter G. Wilson you know, started that. And then there's Negro History Month or African American Month or whatever they call them, the month of February these days. And everybody goes to, oh, that's the shortest month of the year, blah, 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 blah. But that's not the question. The question is, in that month, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, I know you're holding a, hiring a bunch of black people to do some shows, but 
are you sitting down saying, is this the think tank month? Should we every single day thinking about how we get out of the circumstances or change the circumstances that we're in? That's what that month should be about. Not about shopping, not about cultural, well, also about cultural events, of course. But those are all tied into your own liberation, is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And if we want to expand it, we can go from Martin Luther King's birthday, January what, 15th, to Malcolm X's birthday, uh, May 19th. So from January to May, we should, black people in America, they should figure, figure out stuff how to you know, get out of circumstance or get this yoke off, you know. It's a continuing struggle, just like you all have a continuing struggle in South Africa. Your struggle's not complete. You don't have your freedom. You gotta get your economic freedom. Hey, and we have to get out of economic freedom. And there's a bunch of places all the world they have to get out economic freedom. So this is not about tribalism. It's not about, you know, countries. It's not about races. It's about economics. So that's where I stand these days. That's when I get out of this whole xenophobia. You know, we don't have this, we don't have that, whatever. We need think tanking. And this comes from, this one of those dispatches that comes from the arts director of America. So that would be me, T, for the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. Mm.